Hello everyone, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. Let's begin today's class. I hope guys you are aware of the timetable for RBI Sabin Abad's live sessions as well as our mobile application. So I'm quickly beginning with the question number one. Which of the following statement is correct in relation to the national suicide prevention strategy? So yes, for the very first time, the national suicide prevention policy or strategy has come out and the obvious feature or you can say focus of this policy is to prevent the suicide uh, in India and to uh, you can say reduce the suicide rate. We are going to discuss about this strategy in detail but let's first look at the answer of this question. So the very first statement says that it aims to establish effective surveillance mechanism for suicide within the next three years. Option B, it aims to organize mental health workshops in schools across the country. Option C, it aims to achieve a reduction in suicide mortality by 10% by 2030. So which one is the right answer? So here guys, the right answer is option E because both A and C statements are correct and this statement is wrong, okay? So no workshop will be organized in schools for the mental health as of now. In future, if the government wants to do, the, do so, we cannot tell about it right now. But as of now, this is the scenario. So let's move into the details of the policy. First of all, this policy has been launched by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. And it is the first time that such a policy has come out because recently we have seen that the Suicide burden in India has increased. Many a times you must have heard about people committing suicide, uh, maybe because of family reasons, illnesses or whatever reason is there, but suicide is a coward step. But nonetheless, we cannot say anything about it, but it's just that we have to cover the news here. The news is that Ministry of Health and Family Welfare has released this first of its kind policy, which aims to reduce the suicide mortality by 10% by 2030 and this is a target so do remember this target okay the objectives or the basic targets under the strategy uh, first uh, you can say target is to establish effective surveillance mechanism for suicide within the next three years okay so that whenever the suicide is conducted so the systems or the institutions like police and every everyone can be informed timely okay then to establish psychiatric outpatient departments that will provide suicide prevention services through the district mental health program in all districts within the next five years okay so this is also a good step next is that the strategy would aim to integrate the mental well-being curriculum in all educational institutions within the next eight years and this I would say one of the most remarkable steps or targets of this strategy because um, suicides are committed by the people but the incident of suicide is you can say highest among the people who are aged between 15 to 29. So guys this is the very young age group this is the student life majority okay and in this life the children are committing suicide and nothing can be more tragic than this so if we are having a curriculum that is rich with the you can say larger than life goals or uh, the ideas which teach the students that merely seeking a job getting a job merely getting good marks high marks or topping in the classes not is not at all life okay it is just a milestone in the life not the complete life so life is bigger than this you should seek a bigger purpose that you need to achieve although children may not understand such big big and huge concepts but yes they will definitely get a hope that our lives are not at all restricted only to the examination only to a certain job etc etc okay so that in my point of view is a good step Next is that under this policy, the guidelines will be created for responsible media reporting of suicides and restricting access to the means of suicide. Again, good step. Okay, so these are going to be accomplished under the National Suicide Prevention Strategy. Okay, so these are the targets. 
नेक्स्ट इज द सुसाइड बर्डन ऑन इड सो मोर देन वन लाख लाइफ आर लॉस्ट एवरी इयर टू सुसाइड विच इज अगेन वेरी ट्रेजिक बिकॉज दिस इज नॉट हैपनिंग आउट ऑफ एनी एक्सीडेंट दिस इज द आर ओन टेकिंग ऑफ आर लाइफ लाइफ इज अ वेरी प्रेशियस गिफ्ट एंड द पीपल आर टेकिंग देयर ओन लाइफ सो दिस इज रियली ट्रेजिक द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज दैट द टॉप किलर्स आर प्रेजेंट इन फिफ्टीन टू ट्वेंटी नाइन एज ग्रुप सो द सुसाइड रेट इज हाइएस्ट इन दिस एज ग्रुप नेक्स्ट इज दैट इन द पास थ्री ईयर्स द सुसाइड रेट हैज इंक्रीज फ्रॉम टेन पॉइंट टू टू इलेवन पॉइंट थ्री पर वन लैक पॉपुलेशन द मोस्ट कॉमन रीजन फॉर सुसाइड इंक्लूड फैमिली प्रॉब्लम्स एंड इलनेसेज विच अकाउंट फॉर थर्टी फोर एंड एटीन परसेंट ऑफ ऑल सुसाइड रिलेटेड डेथ नाउ इफ यू आस्क माई ओपिनियन सो इन माई ओपिनियन अपार्ट फ्रॉम द फैमिली प्रॉब्लम इलनेसेज देर आर टू मोर रीजन विच अकाउंट फॉर मेजोरिटी ऑफ द सुसाइड फर्स्ट रीजन इज द लव अफेयर द ऑल द लव रिलेटेड सुसाइड अटेम्प और द सुसाइड दैट द पीपल कमिट एंड दे गेट सक्सेसफुल एंड द वेब सीरीज मूवीज एंड एंटरटेनमेंट इंडस्ट्री सो इन माई ओपिनियन दीज टू थिंग्स आर ऑल्सो responsible for the high suicide rate because in movies in dramas we see a lot of times that the people are not able to handle what is going on in their surroundings they commit suicide for example chichore movie what happened to the kid of sushant singh rajput he committed suicide because he could not clear an iit examination and what is the inspiration or what is the message that the movie is giving to the people although i except that the message is larger than that scene but in a way in the subconscious level the children who are naive who do not understand the big things for them committing suicide is a way to escape so in my opinion such scenes should be prohibited from the media industry if we want to have a good impact on children especially because once we are beyond the age limit of 25 to 29 we can understand the larger meanings to the life we can in a way compromise with the situations in some cases but the age limit from 15 to 25 or children smaller than uh, younger than this age group are prone to committing suicide or to absorb negative things out of such scenes so these scenes should be avoided and as far as the love affairs is concerned so this is not completely my opinion this is the ncrb report okay according to which crimes uh, have increased especially in love affairs and uh, you can say love affairs related uh, suicides and love of love affairs related crime rate has increased in india this is accepted by ncrb so these are the two reasons so if any of the reason is with you guys family problem illness or love affair please you need to handle it because you are bigger than your problem okay just keep this thing in your mind okay so let's see what the government has done for the mental health problem in the month of october 2022 as we are seeing that the society is also taking the initiatives to take mental health seriously and nowadays especially in the urban centers i can say that mental health or seeking a psychiatric health help is not a big taboo as it used to be 10 years or 20 years down the line but now it is not so so recognizing the need for the psychiatric help government has launched this tele mental health assistance and networking across initiative okay on the occasion of the world mental health day which was celebrated on october 10 okay so this initiative what does it do it basically connects you with the mental health counselor you can use this number to connect with the person and then you can share your problems which you are not able to share with your known ones you can share it through uh, the mobile to an unknown person obviously but that person is there for your help only okay and it is very important to open up because if you keep everything inside you the volcano will get more pressurized and it is going to erupt one day so i'm not saying that everyone who is watching me is of suicidal tendency or is depressed in life i'm not saying that at all i'm just saying that if you are feeling anything 
which is troubling you you need to open up if you are opening up in front of your mother if you are opening up in front of your girlfriend boyfriend or anyone best friend sister or brother whosoever it is but it is very important that you heal your heart no one else is going to do that okay now coming back to this tele manas so nimhans national institute of the mental health and neurosciences in bangalore is the implementing agency of this tele manas initiative so guys this is important from your exam perspective and as a mentor of you guys i am also telling you that if you need to share your problems with someone first of all i am here you can share your problems with us you can seek guidance from us as far as your examination is really concerned through these channels and if there is a certain problem that you are uncomfortable in sharing with any other person and you need any kind of psychiatric help you can go to this number or you can just go to these numbers so this i have uh, extracted from the live love love laugh foundation of dipika padukone so there you can find these organizations which arrange the mental health counseling okay so that was all the first question now we are on the second question which edition of the indo pacific regional dialogue will start in delhi so here guys fourth edition of this will be started in delhi so first of all do remember that this indo pacific regional dialogue is organized by the indian navy so it is an annual event of the indian navy and national maritime foundation is the organizer or the nodal agency for this event it is the knowledge partner and chief organizer the theme of this year's event is operationalizing the indo pacific oceans initiative okay so here two keywords are there operationalizing indo pacific oceans initiative okay apart from these two keywords there is nothing else in the theme i know that but these are the keywords we cannot cut paste anything from this okay so just try to memorize the theme and once you revise it two to three times or at least four to five times it will get into your mind so here guys this is the indo pacific region here we have south asia southeast asia east asia oceania so these are all the uh, sub you can say the regional divisions within the indo pacific region and this is our indian ocean so that is the thing now if we look uh, from the geopolitical perspective so let me inform you that here sorry here we have solomon island okay here and these solomon islands have signed a security deal with china okay now what is the benefit of this so china has promised or has signed this deal with solomon island so that the internal security of solomon island will now be taken care of by china that's the basic idea now what is the threat to the world from this deal first of all the very first threat is to australia because now china has come very near to australia and australia is a member of quad and we all know how happily china takes quad okay so that's the first concern of australia of quad members of us as well so and the other thing is that in the pacific ocean and in the indo pacific region china is doing many things to increase its presence as well as its uh, you can say power in this region so that is also one step of china to increase its power in the indo pacific region which is obviously a problem to india as well as the quad nations now let's see the exact location of solomon island so here guys these are the solomon islands this is papua new guinea and this is australia so this is the exact location now what is the currency and capital of this nation this is your task do tell me okay question number 3 is where was the 25th national conference on e governance organized so here katra is the right answer so department of administrative reforms and public governance grievance and the ministry of electronics and it in association with jammu kashmir government will organize the 25th national conference on e governance in katra jammu very simple 
that this organize uh, this governance meeting will be organized in Qatar. Okay, the next thing to remember is the theme. So the theme is bringing citizens, industry, and government closer. This is the theme. Now, guys, we are talking about governance. We should also be aware of the coming day. So, 26th November is the Constitution Day in India because on this day in 1949, the Constituent Assembly of India adopted the Constitution of India. Okay. But we do not celebrate our Republic Day on 26th November. We celebrate the Republic Day on 26th January 1950 is the date on which the Constitution of India was implemented. Okay. But do you know why is that so? Why did we not celebrate the Republic Day on 26th November when we adopted the Constitution? The reason is that on 26th January 1930 in Lahore, our leaders made the demand for Poon Swaraj. So in order to commemorate this event, we chose 26th January as our first Republic Day, 26th January 1950 as our first Republic Day. And from then onwards, we celebrate the Republic Day on 26th January. Now we are talking about the Constitution. So, oh, okay, first of all, before moving to the next slide, let me inform you that UGC has uh, set a theme for the Constitution Day. Now, first of all, understand this thing that UGC has no power to set the theme for the entire nation. So basically, the Constitution Day will be celebrated on this theme across the universities which are affiliated or recognized by UGC. And this is the University Grants Commission. So obviously, every university and college is recognized and affiliated by it only. So in short, all the universities and colleges are going to celebrate the Constitution Day on this theme. Now, until or unless we have a specific theme coming from any of the ministries, we are going to learn this as the final theme of the Constitution Day. But do remember again that this theme will be celebrated across the universities, not across the government departments, because the government has not stated any theme as of now. Now, coming to this theme, the theme is India, the mother of democracy. Okay, very easy theme. Okay. Now, what I was telling you, I was telling you about the constitution. I told you that constituent assembly adopted it on 26th November, 26th January 1950, we implemented it and become, uh, became a republic. Now, we are talking about constitution. So, let's look at the key figures. So, here is the Bhimra Ambedkar. Here, guys, is Prem, uh, uh, Prem Narayan Raizada who has written the constitution with his hand. You can clearly see he is writing the constitution. And this is Nand Lal Bose who made the designs on the constitution's page. So these are the very three uh, important three people who are associated with the constitution of India. So do remember their names. Now guys, question number four is, what is the name of the recently launched portal of the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy for waste to energy projects? Biomass, Bricket pallet manufacturing plants and biomass based uh, co generation projects. So, here Bio Urja portal is the right answer. Now, guys, the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy has launched two portals recently. First is the Bio Urja portal, and another one is the Biogas portal. First, let's discuss about the Bio Urja portal. So, it is a single window platform and it will help the uh, you can say the manufacturers to seek grant from the government for setting up the plants. Now, what kind of plants? Obviously, bioenergy plant, biomass plants, okay? So, that's the basic idea. Now, the financial assistance will be given under the National Bioenergy Program, okay? Now, what kind of manufacturing facility will be set up by the applicants? So, here, the facilities should be... Uh, waste to energy projects the facilities should use the waste to make the energy either or they should use biomass pallets okay for manufacturing the further energy okay then biomass based co-generation plants can also apply for the grant by the bio urja portal by using the bio urja portal so that is all about the bio urja 
Now let's discuss about the biogas portal, which is for the same purpose only. Okay, but here the difference is that the applicants should uh, make the application for setting up the biogas plant. That's the basic idea. Okay. Apart from this, nothing has changed. Now this is guys India Energy Exchange. Okay, this has nothing to do with both the portals, but it is just an extra information that I'm giving you. So this is the energy exchange that facilitates the trade of energy. Like we have the BSE, Bombay Stock Exchange and National Stock Exchange, which help in trading of the securities. This exchange helps in trading of the power. So here you can see various uh, like we have derivatives in the security market here we have different forms of energy so you can clearly ca call them as derivatives only okay so we can call them as that for our understanding so this is that only. you don't need to go into this this is just for your information only but this India energy exchange is important okay so do remember that there is such kind of an exchange now my question from all of you is i have mentioned these two organizations you need to mention their heads at present last question of the day which of the following is the founding organization of the <coughs> antimicrobial resistance multi-stakeholder partnership platform so here Guys, uh, the question is a little bit faulty because the question should ask you which of the following is not the follow uh, is not the founding organization. So here the right answer is the Royal Society of Biology because apart from this, all these four organizations are the founders of this platform. Okay. <coughs> now this platform, as you can clearly see will work for the antimicrobial resistance okay so it is going to disseminate information about the antimicrobial resistance and all kinds of information that what can we do to prevent this from happening such kind of information will be uh, you can say uh, disseminated through this platform now what is antimicrobial resistance first of all microbes i hope you understand bacteria virus proto uh, protozoa every kind of microbe is there micro uh, microbes or micro living organism is the same thing so what happens suppose a bacteria has infected me i have gone to the doctor i took the medicine and the doctor has prescribed me the medicine for three days but what did i do i took the medicine for one day or you can say two days and then i was completely fine the symptoms were gone and i stopped taking the medicine now what will happen the did the bacteria in my body die with these two day medicines only if that had happened that would have happened then why did the doctor suggest me to take the medicine for three days okay so obviously the bacteria has not died there must be certain level of bacteria that would have survived inside my body now that bacteria has become resistant against a certain type of drug or the medicine which the doctor has prescribed to me what will happen this bacteria is going to stay inside my body and when the similar bacteria will infect me again it is going to become stronger so the symptoms will be stronger so if the doctor prescribes me the same medicine it will not impact okay it will not give me any kind of effect because the microbes have become resistant and in this manner once the microbes become stronger they will impact your body and will lead you towards death okay so this is the antimicrobial resistant and it is one of the major emerging causes of death okay so this is very important and this is my advice for all my student guys if you are ill and you take any medicine so please complete the course of the medicine okay don't leave it in the midst. Okay, so <coughs> this platform was launched uh, during the World Antimicrobial Awareness Week, November 18 to 24. Now, we have read about the organizations launching it and the purpose of it is also clear. So, it is going to work at global, regional and national levels for creating the plans against the antimicrobial resistance so that we can create awareness among the people as well as we can make strong drugs that can kill the bacteria inside the body completely. 
so that is all guys for today i hope you have enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching the video and again uh, in the end only i just want to say uh, your life is bigger and you are bigger than your problems okay so just keep that thing in your mind whenever you are surrounded by the problems and you feel that it is the end guys that is not the end on that note i would like to end this video thank you so much for watching the video